Scientists with the European Space Agency have released a proposal to grow food on the moon. The plan would use hydroponic farming to provide nutrients that are lacking in lunar soil. And if it works, it could facilitate long-term moon exploration by giving Earthling expats a local food supply. So will we be growing Matt Damon's Martian potatoes? Joining me now to discuss retired NASA astronaut Clayton Anderson. Welcome to the show, sir. Hi, Kennedy. Thanks for having me on. So this is very exciting news. Why is it exciting news? Well, I think anybody that wants to go back to the moon understands that we have to figure out how to live and work there. Yeah. And one of the things we have to figure out is how do we get food and water to the human beings on that surface? You know, it's not a very pleasant place to be uh, unless we can add those things that make it more homey. So food is one. Yeah, food is absolutely one. Unfortunately, so you can grow things in lunar soil. That is possible. But you can't grow most things because the soil lacks nitrogen. Does that mean that we would have to take nitrogen with us to the moon? I would guess so. And I think that the, the plan that you mentioned in your intro talks about how, how can we do it without the soil, right? How can we get away from using lunar regolith, which uh, has all the nutrients except nitrogen. So we try to pull those all out of the regolith soil and then drive it into uh, some scientific Mark, Matt Damon, uh, Mark Watney, Mars type looking thing that will allow us then to get those nutrients to the plants hydroponically. That concept is pretty well understood these days. Did stoners revolutionize hydroponic farming by growing weed and water. <laughs> can I take the fifth on that, <laughs> yes, Kennedy, you can. or not? Yes, you absolutely may. I know it's legal in many of these great United States, uh, but certainly you can because I, I feel like I have the most association with the word hydroponics from Cheech and Chong, which is fine. Are you upset <laughs> that the European Space Agency figured this out before NASA? No, I don't think so. I think... I think NASA, I think the European Space Agency, I think a lot of groups understand hydroponics. Uh, I think that anytime we go anywhere now beyond low Earth orbit, it's, it's going to be a collection of humans from the globe, not mm -hmm. just from the United States. So partnering with the European Space Agency, with the Japanese Space Agency, with the Canadians, with everybody, that's the way it's going to have to be in the future, I think. So Gary brought up the movie Wally -E earlier where they had, you know, giant floating spaceships. How would we live on the moon? Because obviously gravity is an issue and things and breathing and things like that. So would we just live in, in little biodomes? That's a great question, Kennedy. And I don't think anybody understands the answer to that. I've heard that uh, we can create bricks from the lunar regolith, and so we can build structures. We can burrow underneath the surface and live underground. Uh, you know, it, it's kind of a weird thing, but what I tell people is you either have to build Earth when you get there or you have to take it with you, and, and that's part of the problem with all this stuff. Living off of Earth means we have to have things that are on Earth that allow us to survive, and that's where the cost and that's where the technology development all of those things are necessary for us to succeed. Yeah, and I think succeed we will. There are so many new frontiers and barriers to overcome. That's why you became an astronaut. Clayton, thank you so much for your time. I do appreciate it. Thanks, Kennedy. It's great to be with you. Thank you.